All right, mathematicians, welcome back to another episode of Math with Mr. Emond. We are right at the tail end of our unit on rational expressions. And we're going to be looking at rational equations today. It's going to kind of hopefully bring everything together for you. And at the end of this lesson, you will feel totally confident with all things rational. And so to solve a rational equation, as we move through these, we're going to kind of keep all of this in mind. We need to factor. It says factor each denominator, and that's because we're trying to find lowest common denominators. But of course, if you can factor numerators, you might as well too, right? It just might make things easier down the line. We never know, right? Then we're going to identify the non-permissible values. This is important. You want to start step one by doing this because if you find a non-permissible value and then later on when you're determining your solutions, one of those solutions is a non-permissible value, of course you can eliminate that right away. You don't even have to check it in your calculator. It's not going to work. It's non-permissible. Then we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by our lowest common denominator. Okay, let's kind of just before we get started look at what this means. So let's say that I have something like 7 over x plus 2x squared over x equals 3 over x. Now what do they all have in common on the denominator? x, right? And of course we learned in the previous lesson that if they don't have a common denominator, you can just make them have a common denominator right? By multiplying by what's missing to create that common denominator. Now I want you to take a look at what happens when you multiply both sides by that common denominator. When I multiply both sides by that common denominator, what happens? Well, this x is going to get foiled in, right? So it's going to get foiled into the numerator on both of them. And then what's going to happen is they're just going to cancel out right? The x that comes here is going to be gone and the x that comes here is going to be gone. That's why you do it. You're, you're getting rid of your denominator and likewise that's going to be gone. Okay? And I'm just going to erase these real quick. Okay, so all your denominators are now gone and that's why we do it. And at this point all that you're left with is 7 plus 2x squared equals 3 because we've eliminated everything. And then we just solve. Now, you, now what you do, so the next step is you solve by isolating the variable on one side of the equation. So, we're, so the next step is obviously to isolate our x squared, right? So we're going to move 7 over to the other side by subtracting it. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. We're going to isolate one more time by dividing by 2, right? That's going to eliminate, that's going to eliminate these. And now we have x squared equals negative 2. And what do we do to get rid of the square sign? We take the square root. So you square root both sides. And so you're going to have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. And one thing that you should definitely know by now, and I made this problem up on the fly, right? So don't get mad at me for showing you something that has no solution. I just randomly thought of this to demonstrate a point. When you have something inside a radical that's a negative, that's an irrational number. And so our x, there's, there's no solution here. So we would just write no solution. Okay. And so then there's no answers to check on, on this made up example that where I'm just demonstrating why we multiply both sides by the denominator, then solve the variable, then you check your answer. Well, in this case, we have, we have nothing to check, right? So this isn't a real practice problem. I was just demonstrating the point of why we're doing what we're doing. Let's actually get started. Okay. So here we have an equation containing at least one rational expression. Now I'm going to show you over the course of this video, two different methods for solving these. Here's the first method. 
Okay, well first we're gonna start off with our non-permissibles. So my first thing I'm gonna do is x cannot equal negative one, okay? I also, I mean, I could factor that step one, but there's nothing to factor. So I went straight into step two, which is identify non-permissibles. Okay, and I'm only gonna come back to this page for this question. Then I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. I'm gonna add a little caveat there. Sometimes before you do this, it's easier to make them all have a common denominator in the first place. We're not gonna do that on this problem because I just wanna demonstrate that you don't always have to, okay? If I look at these right now, this is x over one and this is x minus three over x plus one. What would I have to do to this to get it to have the same denominator? What would be the common denominator, the lowest common denominator? The lowest common denominator would be x plus one. Hopefully everybody can see that, right? The lowest common denominator, like we would have done in the previous lesson, would be x plus one. Let's just go straight, skip right on down into multiplying by the lowest common denominator to both sides. So on the left-hand side, we have a lonesome x, and we're gonna multiply it by x plus one. On the right-hand side, we have x minus three over x plus one, and we are going to multiply this by x plus one. Okay. Now what happens? Well, what happens is this cancels out, and nothing else, right? So now we have to move on to our next step, which is solve by isolating the variable on one side of the equation. All right, so we have, let's foil this, x squared plus x equals x minus three. We need to get everything to one side, that's what our step said. Well, to get everything to one side, you're going to subtract x from both sides and you're gonna add three to both sides. What is this going to accomplish? Well, that's gonna disappear and that's gonna disappear. And if I look here, oh, that disappears too. How nice. And so then we have x squared plus three equals, there's nothing left over here, zero. Okay. Then we have x squared equals, we need to move this back over because now well, our final step was what? Solve by isolating the variable, right? X squared equals negative three. I take the square root of both sides, so x equals plus or minus the square root of negative three. And just like in the previous question, there's no solution. Okay? So, method number one you can skip straight to multiplying by the denominator. I'm just gonna show you method number two now because to be honest, method number one, for me, I'm not a big fan of it. And that's because once in a while you run into problems where algebraically you're just like, wow, this looks like a mess and it's not all that fun. So let's just try it out uh, the normal way. So the normal way, while well, we still start off with x cannot equal negative one, okay. And then we are going to create a common denominator. So we know that on the common denominator is gonna be x plus one. And to make the left-hand side have a denominator of x plus one, you're going to have to, just like in the previous lesson, multiply the entire left-hand side by one, which is x plus one over x plus one, okay? Now we have a common denominator. And my next step in this case is to multiply both sides by x plus one. So first, I create common denominators. That's step one, just like we did in lesson 
three. Create common denominators. Now, when I do this, I can see, ooh, nice, everything cancels out. My denominators are gone. And I'm left with x squared plus x equals x minus three. I can see that this is gone. So now I have x squared equals negative three and we're back to where we were, right? X equals plus or minus the square root of negative three, no solution. Okay. So both methods you can see, they arrive in the same place. The first one I did is technically a shortcut because I'm skipping a step by creating common denominators. However, you have been cautioned. Sometimes skipping that step is gonna bite you in the rear and it's going to make the problem more difficult than it needs to be. So personally, I don't skip that step. I'm okay with sometimes wasting five seconds to create common denominators because sometimes it saves me two minutes in trying to figure out how I went wrong, okay? Let's keep going. Here we go. So again, first step is our non-permissibles. X cannot equal negative one. Second step, create common denominators. All right, so here I'm going to have X over seven, but when I create the lowest common denominator, what is it going to be? It's actually going to be seven times X plus one times three, right? I'm going to have to combine all three to find my lowest common denominator. And that is going to be 21 times X plus one, right? Seven times three is 21. And that's going to be 21 X plus 21. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep this in mind for later. I'm still gonna kinda use this first line. What is this one missing? It's missing a three and it's missing an x plus one. So I'm gonna multiply by a three and an x plus one. Okay, next term. I have the x plus one there. I'm just gonna put parentheses around everything because I can. What am I missing? I'm missing the seven, so I'm gonna add it in, and I'm missing the three, so I'm gonna add it in, and we're done. Now this side, we have x over three. What am I missing? The x plus one, so I'm going to add it in on the numerator and the denominator, and I'm missing the seven, so the same thing. Great. Okay, now we know that what our next step is, our next beautiful step, I'm just gonna move, shift everything over just a little bit. Our next step is we're going to take both of these and we're gonna multiply them by our common denominators. And what does this do? Well, it eliminates the denominators out of everything. Okay. And now what do we have? We have X times three is three X times X plus one. What's this one? We have X times three three times seven, which is 21 X. What do we have here? Let's start with this. We have X squared plus X. Okay, let's do the second steps. So three X times X is three X squared. Three X times one is three X plus 21x equals 7x squared plus 7x. Great. 
What's the next step? Move everything to one side, right? And I'm gonna kind of combine them over. So 3x squared minus 7x, I'm gonna to have to subtract this out. So minus 7x squared. Then I have plus 3x plus 21x minus 7x equals zero. So I have moved these over by subtracting them to the other side. Okay, now what am I doing? Combining like terms. So 3x squared minus 7x squared is minus 4x squared. 3 plus 21 is 24, minus 7 is 17. And at this point, we can factor out an x. So we have, actually, I'm going to factor out maybe a negative x. And that's going to leave me with 4x minus 17. So the first thing I have is x cannot equal 0. Or sorry, why am I finding non-permissibles? I'm not finding non-permissibles. I'm finding solutions. x equals 0. And then for this one, we have... 4x minus 17 equals 0, so 4x equals 17, and x equals 17 over 4. Okay, now we need to check our solutions. So, our first solution is 0. Okay, I don't really need to plug this into the calculator, because I'm going to have 0 over 7, which is 0, plus 0 over 1, which is 0, equals 0 over 3, which is 0. Okay, I don't need to plug that in. I can see that 0 equals 0. So this one is good. Let's try 17 over 4. This one, yeah, yeah, I'm going to need to plug this into a calculator. So let's just get a new document here. Add a calculator. Okay. And what was my solution? 17 over 4. So let's get started. So we have 17 over 4. And whatever that is, is going to be divided by 7. And then we're going to add it to 17 over 4 divided by 17 over 4 plus 1. And that equals 1.41667. Great. Now we're going to check the other side. 17 over 4 divided by 3. Wow. They work. So this is also a solution. All right. Oh, I don't want you to get worried yet. I want you to just keep in mind what was our process. Our process was pretty easy. Our process was find non-permissibles. We did it. Create common denominators. We did it. This we knew we know how to do it. We did it in the previous lesson. Create common denominators. The next step, eliminate them suckers. Get rid of them. And then you're left with your line of text. And at this point point guys it's just plain algebra we've been doing it forever isolate your variable and solve for it right and keep simplifying along the way so yeah it might look like wow that's that seems rough but no it's really not right it's you, you we know how to do this we've been doing it forever okay and then you test your solutions that's it easy peasy let's try one more so again, non-permissible values, x cannot equal zero. Now we're gonna create common denominators. Our common denominator is gonna be 4x. So we have x over four, which needs to be multiplied by x. Minus seven, which needs to be multiplied by four, and x, which needs to be multiplied by, of course, that same four 
equals three, and we need to multiply by an x and a four, and x and a four, of course. Now we have the same common denominators. So I know, and you know, that what my next step is, is I'm gonna multiply by the common denominator, and that's gonna eliminate all my denominators. So why don't we just do that? Let's just eliminate the denominators and save some time writing things out. I know and you know what just happened. I multiplied by the denominator. What am I left with? x squared minus 28 equals 12x. Let's move this over to the other side. x squared minus 12x minus 28 equals zero. Can we factor this? Fourteen and two. X minus fourteen, x plus two. And our solutions are x equals fourteen, x equals negative two. Excellent. So this one was much easier, right? But it's the same steps. It's the same steps. Create common denominators, eliminate common denominators, move on and solve. So let's test our solutions. Here we have 14 over 4 minus 7 over 14, okay? And that equals 3 on the left-hand side. Does 3 equal 3? It sure does. Yes, sorry, Bob. 3 happens to equal 13 every day of the week. So that is a solution. Let's try negative 2. So now we have negative 2 over 4 minus 7 over negative 2. Does that equal 3? Oh, you betcha. And so both those solutions are good. So we're done. So let's just try you doing this. You're going to want to, I'm going to give you a couple hints here of things that you want to try. The first thing that you're going to want to do is factor the denominators, right? Factor this, factor this, factor this. This can't be factored. All right, for those of you on YouTube, welcome back. Let's go over the solution. So the first step for these is to create common denominators. So after factoring this, you see that this turns into two times x minus seven. And that means that this one is just missing the two, so you multiply in the two to the numerator and the denominator, and this one is missing the x minus seven. So you multiply the x minus seven into the numerator and the denominator. Now, what happens is when everything has the same denominator, we multiply by that denominator, and everything just cancels out. So all our denominators cancel out and we're just left with numerators. And you can then foil this, right? So two times x squared plus 25 is two x squared plus 50. x minus seven times x plus five is x squared minus two x minus 35. And this just stays the same. Now at this point, it becomes an easy problem. You are going to move everything to one side. So when you move everything to one side, you end up with x squared plus 10x plus 24 equals zero. You factor that and you get these two. You need to check them in your calculator. So we did check them in our calculator. Where's the negative sixes? Here. So you can see we put the two sides into our equation and we got for the left hand side negative 5.19 for the right, the exact same numbers. So negative six works. And we also check negative four. Here's our solution for the negative fourths, left-hand side, right-hand side, they're the same. So both of these work. On this side, you need to start by factoring, right? So z squared minus four is z squared, is z plus two, z minus two. Factor out a six from this one and you get six times z plus two, and this already had a z minus two. You look at them and you decide on what they're missing. So this one was just missing a six. 
So we add, add, multiply the numerator and denominator times 6. This one was missing the z minus 2, so we multiply the numerator and denominator by that. And this was missing the 6 and the z plus 2, so we add them to the numerator and the denominator through multiplication. Then we de eliminate all of the denominators by multiplying both sides by that denominator leaving us with only our numerators. We simplified it and moved everything to one side and got 4z minus 20. Factor out the 4, so 4 times z minus 5 and z equals 5. And again, look at the calculator here. And when we plugged in our 5, we had both sides being equal to one another. And that's it. So don't get overwhelmed by this. The first step is exactly the same as what we were doing before. The second step is once you have the common denominators, you multiply by those common denominators to eliminate them all. And then you just have a line of numerators, you simplify it and you solve for x, okay? Let's try this. So I'm going to do this one. This is an example of a rational equation that has an extraneous root. Let's give it a shot. So step one is going to be finding common denominators. And what I'm going to have to start with, I'm going to come back to this one up top. What I'm going to have to start with is factoring this, right? So this is going to be k plus 2, k minus 2. And so now I can see what I'm missing for each of them. For this one, I'm missing the k minus 2. So this is going to be 4k minus 1 times k minus 2. And then we're going to have that common denominator, k plus 2, k minus 2. This one's missing the k plus 2. And this one's just fine the way it is. But I want to see, can we factor the top here? Doesn't look like it, does it? No. No. We cannot. So we're just going to leave it the way it is. All right. Our denominators are the same. I know what the next step is. I'm multiplying by common denominators to eliminate the denominator. So I'm just going to go ahead and just eliminate them, right? We know how that works. What do we have now? Let's FOIL these out. So we have 4k squared minus 8k minus k plus 2. That's FOILing this top one. Then we have minus k squared plus 3k plus 2. Okay, we need to distribute this negative sign. And while we're at it, while we're distributing this negative sign, I'm also going to move these over at the end. So 4k squared minus 8k minus Let's put these together. I don't know why I didn't do that before. Minus 9k plus 2. Okay, then this is minus k squared minus 3k minus 2. And let's move these over. Minus k squared plus 4k minus 24 equals 0. Whew! Everything's on one side though now. So now let's combine like terms. Okay. Let's start off with our k squareds. So we have 4k minus k squared minus k squared. So that's 2k squared. 
Let's do our just K's next. You know what? I'm just gonna change color here quick. So let's combine our K values. There we go. So we have nine, negative nine minus three, so that's negative 12 plus four, so that's negative eight, minus eight K. And finally, let's do our non-variables. So two minus two is zero, minus 24. Okay, we've combined it all. We can factor out a two. So that's gonna leave us with k squared minus 4k minus 12. This, can we factor it? Yes, we can. This is k minus six, k plus two. Minus six plus two is negative four, right? So that's the quick math there. Equals zero, so k equals six, k equals negative two. Now we test our answers. Well, first, I guess we should do non-permissible values. Yeah, let's do our non-permissibles. So K cannot equal negative two. K cannot equal two. And that's it, right? This has both of them. Do we have a two or a negative two? Yeah, we do. This is no good. So we don't even have to test this one. This one's already not possible. But let's try the six up. Let's see if six works. So you just plug it into your calculator. You're gonna have four times six. It was six or negative six? Six. Four times six minus one divided by six plus two minus six plus one over six minus two. So this side is equal to 1.125, the left side. The right side is equal to six squared minus four times six plus 24. And that's gonna be over six squared minus four. And they're equal, so the left side is equal to the right side. So this one is our answer, and we checked it. All right, so there was an extraneous root. We found it, we eliminated it, your turn. So give this a shot, this is the last problem of the day. I will see you when you come back. All right guys, welcome back. Let's go through the solution. So the first thing we did is the first thing we always do. We looked at what the common denominator would be, and of course it's x minus four. And the only one that needs to change is this one, right? And this one, you multiply the top and the bottom by that x minus four. And then we kind of like skipped. At this point, we know that what we're doing is we're multiplying both sides by that common denominator and we just didn't write it out, right? Because we know what's gonna happen, these all, they all cancel out, all right? So once we have the common denominator, we just, we just cross them out. We, I don't usually write out, you know, times x minus four because your problem just gets so long when you do that, right? I just cross them out at that point. And that's fine. If you're in my classroom, I'm fine with you not showing that step. I know what you're doing. Trust me, I, I, when I see your paper, and I see that all the denominators have magically disappeared. I know why, I know why, it's okay. And then you foil this, right? So that's what happened. That's what happened in that step there. So you have two X minus eight. 
move everything to one side, combine it all together, factor it if you can factor it, and it becomes easy, x equals four. And you can see in the calculator when we tried, well, actually, no, we didn't try x equals four. The first thing we did was check to see if what our non-permissibles are, and our non-permissible is x cannot equal four. If x cannot equal four, and the only thing we found is that x equals four, then obviously we have no solution. So that's it for today. That's also the end of the unit. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, you can like, follow, and subscribe to my social medias right here to get notifications as soon as new content is uploaded. This video concludes our learning unit. You can find the playlist this video was in right here and click here for the next unit that we'll be covering. Thanks for watching and keep learning everybody. Bye-bye.